This is a whale ear, an auditory bulla, and you might be surprised that more than any other anatomical feature, these heavy little ears help us think of a mammal as being a whale. Take this guy, the pachyocete. They were small distant relatives of the hippo, and although they looked nothing like a whale, because they had these whale ears, an auditory bulla, they're considered one of the earliest whale-like mammals. They were around and swimming in coastal waters 50 million years ago. So it appears that changing your ears must have been important for mammals adapting to live in the sea. You know yourself when underwater it's hard to hear. Sounds are muffled, but also it's difficult to know where sounds are coming from. That's because sound travels better through water than air, and our ears were adapted to detect sounds in air, not water. We know where sound comes from because one ear hears a sound just before the other. Sound bends around our head so that differences in the time of arrival let us know where the sound was coming from. But this doesn't happen when we're in the water. This is because our body's made up of about 65% water. So sound goes straight through us and vibrates our skull. This means that we pick up sound straight through our mastoid bone, which is the part of our skull right here behind our ear bones. So essentially when underwater, we use our skull as an ear. This means that the sound hits both our ears left and right at the same time. And that's why we can't tell which direction the sound came from. For the early marine mammals, this would have been a big deal. So how did whales get around this? For us and other land mammals, our middle and inner ears are attached to our skull. So when the skull vibrates, they do too. But whales and dolphins did something different. They encased their middle and inner ears in exceptionally dense compact bone, these auditory bullas. And then they moved the bulla into a cavity outside their skull. You can see the bulla here in green. And here we're looking from the back of the skull. By isolating the bulla from the skull, vibrations of the whale skull no longer affect their ears. But how then do they get the message into this bulla? Well, different species do different things, and for some, we're still not sure. In tooth whales, the bulla, here again in green, connects to the rear of their lower jaw, and the lower jaw is modified. Here's a dolphin, and this space here houses a pad of fat that leads from the front of the jaw straight back to the inner ear. Sound moves through this just like it would seawater, this is because fat and seawater have similar densities. So the sound from the water enters the head straight on and moves and travels through their fat-filled jawbone straight back to the bulla. Notice how their bulla is curved, almost reminiscent of a seashell, where this shape assists in collecting and amplifying sound. And because their bullas are isolated, sound is now received by each of their ears, the left and the right, independently. So now they have that important information to help them work out where the sound was coming from. Like where's the predator or potential prey. But the baleen whales do something different and we're still not sure exactly how they hear. They don't have that well-developed fat pad in their jaw, but they have a waxy plug filling their ear canal. So where land mammals like us use our pinna, the part of the ear that you can see, to capture and funnel sound down our ear canals, marine mammals don't. Fur seals and sea lions still have a pinna, but they're tiny. And seals have no pinna at all, just an open ear canal. But when underwater, they block the canal off by engorging the tissue around the ear canal with blood. Whales also got rid of their pinna. And their ear canal is narrow and plugged with dense wax. But there's no connection to the eardrum. So for the tooth whales, their ear canal is probably not even functional. From the outside, you see only a pinhole, typically right behind the eye. The changes to marine mammal ears didn't happen overnight. And although those first whale-like creatures, like the pachyocetes, had a large auditory bulla, they used similar sounds transmission straight through the bone, just like we do and other land mammals do. So they probably had poor underwater hearing. It took a long time and lots of different changes to the auditory system to improve underwater hearing and localization. 
However, hearing must have been important as having these incredibly heavy and dense whale ears was one of the first anatomical features that those early whales changed.